Thanks very much, and Senya, uh, and <clears throat> thank you for accommodating me to speak early, as, as I have to go and speak in the Parliament here. But, um, yeah, there's an interesting contrast, uh, which is apparent, I, I suspect, across the world, but very evident here in Ireland, between the attitude of students, uh, of ordinary members of the public, to the genocidal horror that the Palestinian people are suffering, that the people of Gaza are suffering, and then the attitude of governments uh, to that same horror, which everybody is witnessing. Uh, but we see quite stark contrasts in the way governments, and certainly our government, respond to the horror faced by the people of Gaza and uh, what students and indeed academic staff and ordinary working people and ordinary yeah. members of the public are uh, feeling and expressing um, uh, in response to this horror. So to give maybe the government side as an example, illustrative example, uh, at the weekend, the Irish famine was commemorated, which it is every year in an official government commemoration. And uh, that was one of the greatest uh, uh, horrors that was visited on the Irish people. It was one of the first, if not the first, modern famines in the sense that it was a famine that was essentially orchestrated by... Uh, British colonial policy, and in particular, uh, a set of laws called the penal laws, which were in effect apartheid laws, which systematically discriminated against the Catholic population as part of the project of colonial subjugation and divide and rule, to divide Catholics against Protestants as part of subjugating Ireland as a colony uh, and creating divisions between the population uh, to keep the resistance, the uh, national liberation movement down. And that resulted, that famine resulted in a period of about 30 or 40 years <clears throat> of the Irish population being halved from 8 million to 4 million. In fact, the Irish population has never recovered from that famine. Uh, and it is deeply marked into the consciousness of the Irish people. Uh, and indeed, it is why is one of the major reasons why there is such widespread solidarity for the Palestinian people, because people in Ireland automatically uh, identify what we went through during the famine and the penal laws and the British colonial policy that gave rise to that famine and the apartheid laws and the occupation and the colonial policy that has been visited on the Palestinian people. And obviously most acutely people identify with <clears throat> excuse me with the self-admitted plan of uh the Israeli government to starve the population of Gaza to starve them of food electricity water the means to sustain uh human existence uh as part of a genocidal campaign so people in Ireland instinctively recognize uh this connection. So at the commemoration this weekend, disgracefully, the Irish government had the Israeli ambassador president present at that commemoration. But there was absolute revulsion across uh, wider public opinion at this. It was raised today by myself and many others in the Irish parliament expressing our absolute disgust. Uh, because not only is it, in, is it an insult to the people of Gaza and Palestine, it is an insult to the memories of of those who died and were forced uh, into exile during the Irish famine uh, period. It's really trampling on, if you like, our history and heritage, as well as being a, 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 an egregious insult to the suffering people of Gaza. So that's the government response, but the response of the people uh, and the students, absolutely different. So what we've seen over the last uh, seven months is enormous, unprecedented protests on the streets, uh, and in particular, in the college campuses, we have seen an explosion of student activism and uh, campouts and occupations similar to those that have been seen in the United States uh, and Britain and many other parts of the world. 
And I'm delighted to report that if you take Trinity Colleges, which is one of the premier universities and one of the oldest sort of universities in this part of the world, uh, the student protest within a week uh, of uh, their encampment have forced Trinity College into agreeing to complete boycott, divestment and breaking all connections with uh, Israeli uh, institutions uh, and breaking their research partnerships, uh, divesting of any investment uh, in uh, any kind of work, basically, with Israeli academic uh, institutions. Uh, previously, this had happened in the National University of Galway. Uh, it's now spread into the University College Dublin, which is the biggest university. Uh, there's an encampment there as we speak. Uh, so it's spreading like wildfire. The demand for from below of ordinary uh, students, staff, um, demanding that their universities break all relations with a regime that's capable of genocide and guilty of apartheid and ethnic uh, cleansing. And very much that is informed by our own uh, memory and, and history of colonialism and the uh, famine. One other note just to, to make is in the initial uh, period of the Trinity College demonstration, the college authorities attempted to bully and intimidate the students by threatening the student union leaders with expulsion, uh, uh, loading a, a very, very large fine on the student union uh, and uh, trying to seal off the university so that others that wanted to express solidarity with the occupation couldn't physically get into the university. But because of the scale of popular support for the occupation and the scale of students and academic staffers, uh, support, uh, they were forced to do a U-turn within a period of about a week. And I, to me, that sort of highlights both the sharp contrast between governmental response or the response of people you may get at the top of institutions, and then uh, the attitudes of ordinary students, uh, teaching staff, academic, and the wider public who are pushing our government and our state institutions uh, to break links with the state capable of uh, genocide. The last thing I just wanted to report on a personal level is uh, recently I was supposed to speak at the Palestinian Palestina Congress in uh, Berlin, I, along with um, Yanis Varoufakis, uh, many, many Jewish opponents of Zionism, uh, other members of parliament from across Europe. And as probably you know, it was absolutely outrageous what happened there. A relatively modest conference of about two or three hundred people was shut down by a mobilization of thousands and thousands of German riot police. Absolutely incredible. Uh, people like a um, uh, Palestinian doctor from Britain who was supposed to speak was stopped at the airport, physically deported out of the country. Uh, <laughs> obviously, we weren't allowed to speak. I mean, I was only going to be speaking on Zoom, but we are prevented from speaking. They shut off the computers. Uh, and the whole conference was shut down. Uh, Jewish speakers who were speaking against Zionism were arrested at the conference, uh, supposedly on the basis that the conference was going to be an exercise in hate and anti-Semitism. I mean, the sickening irony of it uh, is incredible. But again, what I take from that is that the, the, the viciousness of the German government's response is in sharp contrast to the very rapidly changing attitudes of ordinary people in Germany who look at the genocide, the horror, the fact that their government continues to arm this genocide uh, and are outraged by that fact. Uh, so there's a very sharp contrast between official society in the Western world and the attitudes of ordinary people. And as dire as the situation is for the people of Gaza, and as hypocritical as the standards are of uh, Western governments, I take great hope from the level of solidarity and mobilization and protest uh, that is erupting across the world that is simply saying, this is genocide. And whoever is the victim of a genocide, if you have a scintilla of humanity, you should be standing with them uh, and demanding that your government breaks all links with a regime capable of this worst of all possible crimes. Thanks very much.